Have you ever wanted to get your hands on the Apple iPod Classic? Is your iPod Classic malfunctional? Or do you miss the good old days back in 2007? If you answered yes to any of these questions, this video is for you. To follow this guide, you don't need any prior knowledge about iPods, let alone electronics. I am creating this video so that anyone, no matter what age or electronic experience, can follow with relative ease. I have also included a link to a Google document in the description containing lots of information about the iPod Classics, including which combination of parts you can buy, the advantages and disadvantages of each iPod generation, and the purchase link of individual iPod parts. Also, chances are that you're probably not going to replace everything like I did in this video. So if you're going to only replace one thing, let's say just a hard drive, you can watch until the part where I remove the hard drive, then skip or fast forward the video until I replace the hard drive, and continue from that spot of the video. Welcome to my all-in-one guide in restoring your iPod Classic in 2020. You can open it with the nylon tools that you get with literally any part you order from China, but you can also buy a metallic flexible pry tool from a company named iFlash, which makes the overall process much quicker and easier. There are 11 clips that lock the front housing into place, and your goal is to unlock these clips by inserting the thin tool in between. As you can see me doing it, it is hard but it isn't impossible. Once you have loosened all the clips, don't get too excited and rip out the front cover because the battery wire is still attached to the logic board. Just pull on the black pull tab with a long tool and the battery will just pop out. Now that the battery cable is removed, to pull out the battery, you can jerk it out as all connections are safely removed. To remove the hard drive, simply flip the hard drive downwards, flick up the pull tab, and pull out the hard drive. Then, start removing the 6 screws on the sides of the front panel. So just a short message, if you guys are enjoying the guide so far, please consider subscribing to my channel. Every day, when I check YouTube Studio and see that I've gained another subscriber, it really motivates me to make more free videos like these. Also, if you're running into any problems, leave a comment down below and I'll probably reply within 1 or 2 days. But if you have some extra questions that you want to personally contact me for, my email is in the channel description so just shoot me an email. I'll always be willing to help. Now it's time for the ribbon cable. If you're not planning to replace the ribbon cable, you can just keep the connection without removing it because it might be quite difficult to put it back together afterwards. However, I'll still remove mine for the sake of this video. To remove the display, you pull up the pull tab and remove the display cable. Then, to replace the click wheel or the logic board, you start by removing the logic board from the metal frame. There are two screws on the 6th and 7th generation iPods blocking this, so use an appropriate size crosshead screwdriver to remove these screws. If you have the 5th generation iPod, you can just go ahead and skip this step. Once you remove these screws, you can push the logic board out of the metal frame but since there is some adhesive inhibiting this, try to apply even pressure to all spots of the logic board and try not to bend the logic board too much in one spot as the logic board may snap. But don't worry, as long as you divide your force evenly to all spots of the board, you'll be perfectly fine. Once you remove the logic board, you can simply pull up the click wheel tab, remove the old click wheel, insert your new click wheel, and pull down the click wheel tab to secure the connection.
When you've done that, you put everything on the front panel together as can be seen in the clip. Now, take a look at the back panel. The things that you should transplant if you're planning to change the back panel is the bottom 30 pin port guard and the ribbon cable. For both, all you need is the same small crosshead screwdriver. As seen, just remove all the screws and transplant everything to the same spots in the new housing. The footage of replacing the 30 pin port cover at the bottom wasn't recorded, but it's pretty self explanatory. Now you can connect the ribbon cable to the motherboard by unclipping the pull tab, pushing in the cable to the motherboard, and clipping the pull tab. To replace your hard drive, you can choose either between a new hard drive or an SD card with an adapter made from a company named iFlash. I chose to use the iFlash because it boosts both the speed and the battery life of the iPod. It's very easy to use as well. All you have to do is take out your standard size SD card or use an adapter with your micro SD card. As I did. Next, you click the SD card inside the iFlash and mount the iFlash to where the original hard drive goes by unclipping the pull tab, inserting the iFlash and closing the pull tab. You can also replace the hard drive cable as shown, but I don't recommend it unless you find it necessary. There's one more thing you have to do before mounting the front panel into place. Connect your new battery and plug in the 30 pin charger. If a screen saying connect to iTunes to restore pops up, you fixed your iPod correctly. If you see a X sign or a warning, you may have done something wrong. If you want to take an extra step to ensure that you've connected everything properly, you can connect your device to your laptop or desktop with iTunes installed and download the firmware onto the device. I recommend this step for beginners because if something, such as the click wheel, does not function properly after you close the iPod, you have to go through the entire process all over again. If you went through this process and are confident that everything works properly, mount the front panel to the iPod and screw in the 6 screws. Finally, you just have to place the battery in between the hold switch and the headphone jack of the ribbon cable as shown and stick the shockproof foam sticker on top of the iFlash and the SD card.
To connect the battery, insert your battery cable to the port as shown and push down the port to secure the connection. When you're done with that, just push the back and front housing together and you're all done. Download music to your iPod through a PC or Mac with iTunes and enjoy your restored iPod. Thanks for watching and take it easy.